In this video, we're going to be discussing some tips and tactics for when you may be fishing either before, during, or after a rainstorm. Now, we had quite a few questions come in. The latest question came from Randy Jones. Uh, he emailed us asking if we can put out some tips as far as fishing around rainstorms and what to look for, what types of areas you would want to fish, and so on. So the first thing about fishing either before, during, or after rainstorms, first things first is safety. You don't want to be out there in really bad weather. Make sure you are checking the radar constantly. If anything, try to get out there before or after a storm. You never really want to fish during a storm, especially right before a storm or right after a storm. That's usually the most dangerous uh, as far as lightning goes. So if, give yourself plenty of time before a storm approaches to try to hit the water and also wait a little bit after a storm passes to hit the water. As soon as it stops raining, you don't necessarily want to get out there because again, lightning right before a storm and right after a storm passes through is typically going to be the worst. And that's something a lot of people don't really uh, take into consideration. So again, first things first, safety. Now, as far as pressure change goes, Usually when a storm is coming through or about to come through, the pressure starts to drop. Whenever you have a rising or falling barometer, that's almost like a dinner bell for fish. Now if you have a falling barometer that typically signals to the fish that a storm is coming through, they pick up those pressure changes from the lateral line that is on the side of their body. It's basically like a little hollow area with little hairs in there and water goes in and out and whenever there's a pressure change water is forced through that area along that lateral line and those fish can detect those pressure changes so when you have low pressure coming through or a falling pressure typically means a storm's coming through rings a dinner bell basically for those fish and they'll start feeding before that storm comes through and the quicker or more uh, intense that barometer is falling the more likely those fish are going to feed if it's just a very subtle dropping of the barometer, those fish may feed a little bit, but they're, they're not gonna feed as aggressively if that barometer is falling very quickly. Same thing when it's rising, after a storm passes through. Those fish know the storm passed through, they're in the clear, that pressure's rising and they'll start feeding again. And like I said before, wait a little bit after a storm passes through to get out there on the water just to make sure it's safe. Now, if you do happen to just have a small rain shower come through, no thunder or lightning, or maybe you have an area of low pressure just sitting over you and it's just raining, nothing uh, crazy, no thunder, lightning, strong wind or anything, that can be a really ideal time to get out there on the water as well, especially for trout and snook from what I have experienced. They get real fired up when that water cools off the surface, uh, that rain water cools off the surface of the water. And also you'll have some areas where you might find some excess water runoff. So let's just take a look here on the map and give you some examples of some types of areas that I would be uh, targeting either before it's raining or while it's raining or after it's raining. So we'll just look here on the map. Let's go down here near Southwest Florida. Typically when you have islands or uh, shorelines, whenever it rains, you're gonna have a lot of runoff coming off those shorelines and that can bring food into the water, very small pieces of food that bait fish will go and eat, and that will draw in the predator fish. So targeting shorelines, keeping an eye out for any water runoff that may be uh, coming off those shorelines is definitely something to take a look at when a storm comes through or when you get a lot of rainfall. Also, if you find any culvert pipes in an area, uh, not sure what's going on here, no no culvert pipes or anything, but if you do have an area with very small canal, maybe a residential canal, you'll usually have some extra water flow coming out of there. And again, when that rain comes down, it will wash uh, debris and all sorts of stuff into the water that the bait fish can pick at, and it will draw those bait fish to the shorelines, which draws those predator fish to the shorelines. So fishing anywhere from four feet to a foot, maybe less, can be ideal right after a rainstorm comes through and just targeting those shorelines wherever you may see some water runoff coming out. Now another ideal area to target, and it's really based on water depth, are shallow flats anywhere from two feet to a foot deep. Can be really good after it rains because that more shallow water will actually cool down quicker than an area that's pretty deep because of that shallow water. So when the rain comes down, cools off that area and will bring it back to life, especially in the summertime. 
let's say it's noon or one o'clock, heat of the day, nice storm comes through, uh, cools that area off, storm's gone by about two, three o'clock, definitely take advantage of those areas later on in the afternoon after those storms pass. Now, I like to use top water either before or after and even during a storm sometimes depending on how strong it is because of the rain cooling off the surface of the water and also the overcast skies from the storm and from the uh, clouds. Snook, trout, redfish, all those predator fish will definitely hit a top water around storms either before, during, or after and again when it comes to during a storm really depends on how bad or how strong it's raining. If it's raining too hard, I'll typically fish a little deeper around four to five feet because those fish will move down and seek shelter if it's raining really hard or really bad weather. So that will wrap up this Q&A video of fishing around storms or before, during, after, and some factors that you wanna take into consideration when you do fish around those times. So if you have any questions or comments or any additional tips you would like to add, definitely leave a comment down below. Till then, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Now if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more in-depth spot breakdowns showing exactly where and how to fish certain areas based on the time of year, tides, weather, and all other sorts of variables that come into play, definitely be sure to check out our Salt Strong Insider Club where we guarantee you'll start catching more inshore fish in less time. So until then, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next video.